In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Energy Apex. So this is like a solar power system in a box. It has over a kilowatt hour of battery power. It has a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and it has an MPPT charge controller. So all you guys have to do is connect some solar panels to this port and then connect some appliances to these AC outlets and you're done. So it is beginner friendly, but some of my viewers will not like these. A lot of my viewers still like the DIY ones and I personally like modular DIY systems too. Because if something breaks, I can replace it with another manufacturer's inverter, for example. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use it. We're gonna do some interesting tests on it and then we're gonna talk about some things that I dislike and what I hope they improve in the next version. Let's talk about the box it's pretty simple and on this side you have input so you connect up to 500 watts of solar panels to here and you have to use their solar panels in the back I have energy solar panels and I've actually tested them and they're very high quality and they produce a lot of power so you connect them in parallel through this port and then you also have a secondary port and this is where you charge a power wall charger adapter or a car charger and then these terminals are if you want to expand the battery capacity I do not recommend anybody using them with lead acid batteries. There's no temperature compensation. They only charge to 12.6 volts and most lead acids need to be like at least 13 to 14.5 volts. So I don't recommend that, but they are coming out with a lithium battery expansion and that will work really well with the Energy Apex. On the front, we have AC outlets. And so we have six AC outlets in one RV 30 amp plug. But remember, this is a 1500 watt AC inverter that means that it will not produce 30 amps out of this plug it's more like 12 to 15 amps and then on this side we have the DC stuff DC plugs cigarette lighter adapters and USB fast charge and USB C and you have one switch in a small screen and when you flip the switch to the left all of the DC outputs will turn on they will become live if we were to switch this switch to the right the DC outputs will turn on and the AC outlets will turn on. And it also tells you how much battery capacity you have available. And it also tells you the voltage of the battery currently. This chemistry of battery and how they have the cells arranged, it will charge up to 12.6 volts. Right now it's at 12.5 and it's at 100%. If you left it on the charger for a long enough time, it would probably hit around 12.6 volts. And then we have a watt meter and it will tell you whether it's charging or discharging. It will tell you the net loss or gain that's going in or out of the battery. So yeah, this screen is way better than the Energy Kodiak screen. It actually tells you what you want to know. And then on the side, we have some circuit breakers. So if you push any of these outputs too far, it might pop a circuit breaker and you'll have to push it back in. And then we also have some cooling fans. On the back, we have some little stickers and it looks actually a lot better than the Energy Kodiak in my opinion. They also painted it a different color. It has like a flat finish. The other one had a flat finish, but this looks like military looking. It looks pretty cool. And then on the bottom, we have some rubber feet. You have a carrying handle and a carrying strap. And this one's actually lighter than the previous version. This one weighs 20 pounds and the previous version weighed 25 pounds. So let's connect a load and see what happens. The heat gun is running and it's pulling 755 and it will say DIS and that means discharging. That means that it's using power from the battery. And if it says discharging while you have solar panels connected, that means that there is a net loss from the battery. Now we're gonna connect this AC wall adapter and see what happens. And right now it says CHG and it's charging and there is a net increase of 21 watts. But right now the battery is pretty full. Usually this charger will push like 70 to 80 watts, but because it's full, it's not pushing that much. So now what we're gonna do is turn on the heat gun and the charger and see what the net loss is. And so instead of like 770 watt loss, we're only having a 680 watt loss because that's the net loss from the battery. Now we're gonna connect some solar panels to the Energy Apex and they come with these cables. These are EC8 plug cables. And you can't really screw this up. All you have to do is plug one into the Energy Apex and it can be a little hard to plug it in at first, but after you do it a couple times, it gets easier and easier. And then you just connect it to either solar panel. And now we have the apex connected to this solar panel. But if you wanna add more solar panels, you're going to have to connect it to this other connector. So take the other wire it comes with and add another extension cable and then plug it into the other solar panel. 
And then it will look like this. We have an EC8 plug connecting it to the second solar panel. And if I put these solar panels in the sun right now, we will produce power. So let's see how much power it can produce. Now we're gonna connect our two 100 watt solar panels to the energy apex. And today is a super bright blue sky day. And we're gonna see how much power we can pump into this. I'm using the wires supplied by energy, but I also added my own watt meter. And so the open circuit voltage is 20 volts. And then I just need to plug this in. And right when I plug it in, you will see that the blue light is illuminated. And in full sunshine, we are producing 159 watts at the battery. And right now the solar panels are producing 182 watts. So for 100 watt solar panels, these are producing 90 watts. Most of my Renogy 100 watt, like those ones over there, produce about 70 to 75 watts. And my rich solar ones produce 90 to 100 watts. My rich solar panels only produce 100 watts when they're cold. So these panels are actually doing really well, pretty much as good as my best solar panels. Some time has gone by and the sun is directly overhead and we're pulling 170, 171, 170 watts. And then down here on the watt meter, we're doing 186 watts, 187. So really good results here. And now we need to talk about these EC8 plugs. When the Apex was first announced, I made some videos complaining about why they're using these. These are not waterproof. They're not UV resistant. And if you just leave them outside like this, they will literally fall apart. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to use some marine grade heat shrink over this connection so that it will last in outdoor environments. And you need to find marine grade heat shrink. The good stuff can cost quite a lot of money. So first slip it over one of the wires and then connect the connectors and then slip the heat shrink over the connectors. And then use a heat gun to shrink the heat shrink. And I'm already seeing a problem with this. Look at the holes on the sides, water can still leak through. So what you're gonna have to do is fill this hole with liquid electrical tape. And this is what Energy recommends the solution be for these connectors. I really don't like these connectors for you know outdoor environments. They're not made for it. And this doesn't seem that great because you're gonna have to fill in that whole entire hole with uh, liquid electrical tape. And you can't put smaller pieces of heat shrink over here because this connector is so large. I can't slip anything smaller onto it. So technically it will work and you'll have to make sure that that liquid electrical tape is all the way in that hole. But yeah, I kind of don't like this solution. I wish they used a different type of plug. And I was actually gonna do a video tutorial on how to add MC4 connectors, but I didn't realize how they wired it. And there's gonna be a lot of amps going through this wire that connects to the first solar panel. So you cannot use MC4 adapters on this system. You have to use these no matter what. With the heat shrink and liquid electrical tape, you will be good to go. It will take some added effort and work, but it will last for years. Now we have a 100% full battery and we're going to do a load test. We're going to see how much power we can push with the inverter until it turns itself off. So first we turned it on. We're going to start the stopwatch right when I turn on the heat gun. We are pulling 1500 watts and then at the inverter output we are doing 1300 watts. And this has a 1500 watt inverter so it should be able to power it. Now the inverter fans have turned on at a minute and 40 seconds. The voltage is starting to sag all the way down to like 10.9 sometimes. So it might cut off soon. And it's a pretty continuous draw. So I'm gonna put it on kilowatt hours so we can see the consumption for how much time we're using. And it turned off at three minutes and eight seconds. And in three minutes, it's dropped down 10% with that much load. And it will not turn on again so we're gonna let this thing cool down and so even though this is a 1500 watt inverter and at the outlet we were only pulling 1300 watts it will cut off high temperature wise at three minutes and 10 seconds but in the manual it states that it can only power an ac continuous load at the discharge rate of this battery at 550 watts so that's the continuous rate. So even though you have a big inverter, you can't really use all of it continuously. Now the inverter has cooled down, so we're gonna turn it back on again, and we're gonna do a new test. And instead of pulling, you know, 1600 watts, we're only gonna pull 700 watts. So let's do this. 
So we've got 780, 777, and we're gonna see how long we can pull this load for. Now for a little update, we're at eight and a half minutes and 786 to 760 watts coming from the battery, 630 watts coming from the AC receptacle. And it doesn't seem to be getting much hotter, but we'll see if it cuts off in the next 10 minutes or so. So at around 10 and a half minutes, the fans came on. All right guys, we have been running this for 32 minutes uninterrupted. It has not disconnected or turned off because of the temperature. And we're still pulling 760 to 790 watts continuous. So yeah, as long as you do not push anything more than that, you'll be all right. You can run that all day long. Also understand that right now it has a lot of ventilation. If you do not have much ventilation where you mount it, you will not have as long of a run time with this size of a load. So keep that in mind. Having lots of airflow is very important when doing these tests. Oh my God, no way. And right now we have 299 to 302 watts at the watt meter, but on the battery shunt with the inverter losses included, we're pulling 362 to 350 watts. Now the air conditioner is getting really cool. I also moved it so that the back of it where the heat is being expelled and the water is coming out, it will be able to drain properly and cool itself off. And doing some quick math, if you take 1.1 kilowatt hours and you divide it by 375 watts, it likes to go between 360 and 384. So 375 is right in the middle. We should be able to run it for 2.9 hours. So I turned everything off and these cooling fans have been on for about four minutes and I'm waiting for it to cool down and then we'll test the USBs. Oh, there we go. So now we're gonna do only the DC side and we're gonna see how much power we can pump from this USB receptacle and the efficiency. And so right now we have five volts and three amps. So 15 watts and up here we have 15 watts. So that's really good. They must have a really nice regulator in here. Now let's test the other one. We've got five or 4.9 and 3.1, so around 15. So that's really good. And now we're gonna charge my phone with the type C and let's see what we're at. And the watt meter is saying 16 watts continuous and we have 19 watts up here. So not as good efficiency wise, but that's a really great output for USB-C. So they did a good job with these. These are really nice. And I like how they look too. And the common question I get is how to power 12 volt devices with the Energy Apex. And you can buy these cigarette lighter adapter plugs and they will plug in right here and you'll have a positive and a negative and this has a fuse. You can also connect plugs, but understand that when you connect to either one of these, you're going to be going off of the voltage right here. So right now we're at 61% state of charge and it's at 11.45 volts. That means that 12 volt appliances will not run that well when this is like below 80% state of charge. Like right now, if I were to connect a 12 volt appliance, the performance will not be that great compared to connecting it directly to a lead acid 12 volt battery that's at a high state of charge because this runs at such a lower voltage because of the lithium chemistry inside the performance will be decreased. On other solar generators that I test and review, like the Jackery, it has a regulated output, so it's always at 13.2 volts, whether it's at a low or a high state of charge, so the performance is good. On this one, it's not. So what you can do instead, actually, is buy an AC wall adapter that these can plug into, and then it will be regulated. But there's lots of options here. But this works great as well. If you just have a fan or something, it really doesn't matter. Just plug it in right here, or a laptop charger. This is gonna work great. Now let's talk about the price of the Energy Apex. It costs $1,800. With my affiliated coupon code, it will only cost $1,400. But understand that in a previous video, we did a cost comparison breakdown of building your own DIY system at home with a lithium-based battery and with a pure sine wave inverter and an MPPT. It would cost practically the same amount of money. So please watch that video if you think that this price is scary. A lot of people don't realize that the overall system cost can be quite a lot. Um, when you guys see my videos with like an MPPT, I'm like, oh, this one's only $100. Oh, this is only $200. But when you add up the cost of the entire system, all the converter boards and all of the regulators, it can cost quite a lot of money to build these systems. This thing has everything in it. It's easy to go. Just 
just buy it and you're done. Now we need to talk about if the Energy Apex is actually worth your time. And there are a lot of pros and cons that I wrote down. So first let's talk about the pros. It's easy to build and it's practically the same cost as a do-it-yourself lithium battery system. You get high quality solar panels and I really like those solar panels. That actually impressed me a lot. Um, everything works as advertised in the manual and on the website. Nothing was false. Next, it has the fastest charge rate on the market compared to like Goal Zero and the cheap Chinese generators. It charges very quickly with 500 watts of solar power. Next, it's super lightweight. The chemistry that they're using, lithium ion, but nickel magnesium cobalt oxide, it has a high energy density. So if you want something really small and compact, it really does excel in that compared to the other units available. Next, the upgraded screen, the new USB ports, and the MPPT all work as advertised, and they are a great upgrade over the Energy Kodiak. But the one thing that they didn't upgrade is the battery. It is the same exact battery with the same discharge rate capability. And the charge cycle life for the battery, they state it's 2,000 charge cycles. And for the Goal Zero, down to 80% capacity, it's only 500 charge cycles. And you know what? They're all using the same chemistry of battery and they might be changing the charge and discharge bandwidth so that they can increase the charge cycle life but I'm seeing the voltage that they're using is 12.6 so I don't think they're actually doing that with the energy apex and in my mind though if you think about how these systems work and if you don't use it in a high temperature environment there's a good chance that the battery cells will last a very very long time remember that at that limit of 500 to 2000 charge cycles you still have 80 percent capacity so a lot of people are going to be able to use these generators for the next 10 to 20 years and i'm thinking that the inverter and the converter boards will probably fail before the battery cells do especially for solar use we have have low C rates and if you keep it in a ventilated compartment you're gonna get some crazy high charge cycle life numbers but you have to avoid the heat if you keep it in a hot car or a van and you're charging it very quickly all the time the charge cycle life will decrease but like I said even if you decrease the charge cycle life, these things are probably going to last way longer than most people are ever going to use them. The things around the battery cell will actually fail before the battery cells do. So all of these benefits make it very good for like a weakened warrior or a prepper or maybe disaster relief people. Now let's talk about the cons. The EC8 plug connector situation is a joke. I mentioned this earlier. Um, Energy talked to me and they were like, no, 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 it's fine. We could use the heat shrink. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And I I love marine grade heat shrink the stuff is incredible but what i dislike about it is that you're gonna have to fill in those holes and it's very difficult and it takes a lot of work i think they could have made something better and so you can technically make your system work for permanent installation long term but i'm not going to recommend people doing that it's kind of silly like i would much rather have other connectors or use bud splice connectors or something else it's just silly that they're using these and i actually have some ec8 plugs in my backyard and i'm going to leave them out in the sun for a couple months and i'm going to report back to you guys with a picture in the community section of my channel and show you what happens when you leave these things outside i have used lots of plugs outside side on the roof of my RVs over the years and I have seen these things fail. I have used lots of my RC Hobby airplane plugs, EC8 plugs, um, XT60, XT90 and they do not like to be outside. So I'm going to show you guys what happens in the next couple months. Now the next con is that using the battery expansion with lead acid batteries is a joke. Charging up to 12.6 volts, not having temperature compensation and also having the battery able to discharge it down to like nine volts you're going to kill those lead acid batteries i don't see how any engineer designing this thought that that was a good idea i do not recommend anybody even trying it i don't even want to try it with any of my sealed lead acid batteries because i know that it could potentially damage it or it could even damage the energy apex if you actually read the manual you have to have that expansion battery within like 0.1 or 0.01 volts of the energy apex so i just think that that's a joke they should have made some other kind of battery isolator feeding converter system that the one that they have on there is not smart it is going to be smart if you use their lithium battery because that one will have the same chemistry the same charge profile and it will work really well so when they come out with that which they keep telling me about it but they haven't released any information on it i keep asking for even data sheets or 
manuals and they have nothing on it. So I really don't know what it's going to be like, but I do know that it's going to have pretty much the same battery as the Energy Apex. So it will work to expand it, but yeah, using it with lead acid is just a bad, bad idea. I don't even want to try it. It's not even worth it. The next thing is the inverter efficiency is horrible. <laughs> I mean, come on, like 80 to 83%. I redid that test a bunch. Like after and then even before a couple days, I was like, why is it so bad? And then I was like, you know what? All right, that's that's what it is. The watt meter says this, the shunt says that. That's what I'm going with. So yeah, if you're trying to use AC appliances long term, I really wouldn't use that. What you could do though is buy a battery charger for a lead acid battery, plug it into the AC outlet, and that could be your expansion battery. And then on that expansion battery, you could have a high efficiency inverter. But at that point, you're already building your own system. So it's not even worth it. So yeah, that ah, that just makes me so mad. The inverter efficiency is that bad. Now we need to talk about the RV30 amp plug on the front. It's kind of silly. All right, even though it's a 30 amp plug and you can plug your RV into it, it's only going to push 12 to 15 amps maximum. That's like for like less than a minute under most temperature circumstances. What you're actually going to get is like 4.5 amps at 120 volts, considering the continuous discharge rate of the battery. So yeah, I think it's kind of gimmicky and it's not really usable. I mean, you're only doing like one sixth of what that plug is rated for. Like that is not much power at all. Next, you can't charge from the car charger and solar at the same time. It states in the manual that you can possibly damage it. But why? Why can't they make a relay system or something? It's really not that difficult to implement um, so that, you know, when solar is producing a lot, it can, you know, funnel power or you could have one board that regulates it from both sources. I mean, there are cheap Chinese generators that have that ability. Um, I don't know why they don't. So yeah, I was pretty disappointed by the Energy Apex. It still works as advertised and it will make a lot of beginners really happy. Like for me, I'm really nitpicky because I want these things to work in outdoor environments for 20 to 30 years. And not all of my viewers require that. So if you guys are just in it for prepping or you're just in a van and you want 200 watts on the roof of your vehicle, this will actually make you super happy and all of these things that I'm talking about probably won't even apply to you. But if you want a super powerful system that that power when it comes in, you know you are charging that battery at the maximum rate and you can discharge very quickly, then you're gonna have to build a build it yourself system. There are lots of companies right now building um, solar generators generator boxes and I'm really excited to tell you guys I'm still waiting for manufacturers to give me release dates but there is a lot of other new stuff on the line and energy even said that they're building a better one with a higher input voltage limit for more of a permanent installation so maybe they will come out with a new generator that fulfills all of my wishes but I'm not sure how long it will take for them to build this new version the last time they gave me a date they were off by a year and a half to develop the energy apex so and they're still telling me that the lithium battery expansion is coming out i still haven't heard any news on that either and they keep telling me that it's coming soon still haven't heard anything also with the higher input voltage limit on the new one that they're creating i don't know why they didn't do it on this one the amount of money and time that they spent on these ec8 plugs and just the actual copper that you have to use for 500 watt array in parallel, they could have easily have had an MPPT with a higher solar input voltage limit, but they didn't. Like that's the whole reason that you use MPPT. It's not the entire reason, but that amp boost when you have them all in series and each one has bypass diodes in case you have shading problems, like that's the reason you want MPPT. But we have this low solar input voltage MPPT. So yeah, I thought that was completely completely illogical. I was actually expecting them to come out with a higher voltage limit one. So yeah, lots of pros and cons. I don't think most people are going to care. It is easy to build. It takes like 10 minutes to build it. And a lot of people that throw it in your garage and don't use it that often, it's perfect. Or a weekend warrior. If all you need to do is power your laptop and my other solar generators like the Jackery are not cutting it for you, it will work great. 
But if you are as picky as me and you want something powerful, it does not work. There are too many things on it that I just cannot wrap my mind around why they designed it that way. Also, if you guys want to learn more about do-it-yourself solar power, it is super easy to build your own system. You don't have to go with any specific manufacturer, and I have like DIY videos that will teach you step by step. So please check out my website. I've been updating it a whole lot. And if you want to also learn about other plug and play solar generators, I have a whole buyer's guide on there and it tells you at a glance what each one is capable of and in the next couple months we're actually going to have a lot more generators to test and so yeah i'm going to be actually putting the energy apex up against other ones and so those videos will be very fun and interesting and so yeah come back later if you guys want to see more and i'll talk to you later bye ended up liking these solar panels so much that they are my main test panels. They have really good output. I'm also going to leave these out in the sun for a couple months and report back on how they look. And I also use some waterproof butt splice connectors to connect them to my main system. Wires come through the window to some XT60 plugs. I have them in parallel and then I have an XT60 to EC8 plug that I created and it charges great. I really like this. I have it in my front living room. I can plug things in and I've actually been using it to charge my phone like crazy because these output plugs are awesome and I'm going to use it every day for a couple months and report back on what I find and the company said that you cannot connect your own solar panels but it is very easy to do if you just splice in some solar panels that are in parallel and the open circuit voltage does not exceed the limit of the apex you've got a positive and a negative make sure you do not switch these and make sure that the panels are in parallel and 12 volts and you should be good to go you could actually hook up any solar panels that you want but energy does say that it will void their warranty but it's really not that hard to do i mean you've got two wires right here so whatever you guys want to do so yeah guys i hope you guys found this video useful and i'll talk to you later i'll keep you guys updated all right see ya